Hi folks, this is my second go at uploading this video. Uh, the first one that I uploaded got pegged for violating copyright of some songs because I happened to be listening to, listening to YouTube while I, I was doing the video. And it's funny because it was YouTube that flagged me for copyright and it was YouTube that I was listening to. It doesn't make any sense to me. Anyways, so I'm going to see if this is worth narrating or not. It's, I'm not used to narrating a post video, right? Uh, anyways, uh, so these are the steps that I go through uh, to uh, edit every photograph that I post. I don't edit all of my photographs because I might take 800 photographs at one location and I might pick 20 of them to post somewhere like Facebook. Anyways, so I think I'm I think I've done a, I did about 20 images on this one. Uh, it's about 30 minutes long. Uh, the house is a uh, house in south. Uh, the farmhouse is a farmhouse in, in southwestern Ontario that uh, has gone derelict. It's probably a case of demolition by neglect, but that's neither here nor there. So, uh, with edi editing my photos, I don't always try to uh, totally change the photograph and make it unrecognizable from the original. Uh, I downsize them so that they're not massive, like poster size. They're manageable. And then I sort of enhance them a little bit, which uh, I think adds a lot to any photograph that gets posted online. Uh, I, I look at it that not every photograph is going to come out the way that it looked when the photographer was there. And in my case, you get a lot of uh, white balance issues because uh, I have this habit of pointing towards the sun. So anyway, so uh, uh, editing these videos and enhancing them uh, does a lot of good things though, uh, bringing out features that people might not have noticed in the photograph and it can also hide some of them. Um, when I go really nuts on some of my photos and, and it looks like a, some spooky full moon sky or something like that, I call that painting. Uh, actually, I don't do that on the computer. I do that on my iPhone. So this, uh, this house, this farmhouse, is owned by a man named George Marshall and it sits it's beside two other farmhouses that probably well that do date back to the same time period about the 1850s to the 1870s 90s um, and they were brothers the three of them were uh, brothers uh, this uh, the man that was in this house was the oldest of those brothers and I have a feeling that the parents of these brothers was in this house originally. And then the other two houses were built. Farmhouses, I should say. Uh, they weren't cattle farms. They probably had some small livestock people, guys, whatever they are, sheep and stuff. And, uh, and grain, mostly grain. Right now it's being used for growing corn and lots of it uh, it's going to be demolished uh, in fact all of the farmland on this entire section of land is going to be flattened out and replaced with new housing lots of it and uh, That's, that's just the way it goes, I guess, with, with old places like this. Uh, they can't keep them all. 
and once a developer, a contractor, or something like that gets a hold of these places, the place can be on the Heritage Registry for Hamilton, but they know exactly what to do. It's called Demolition by Neglect, and they do that very well. After all, there's no point putting any money into it, I suppose, when you can make you can quadruple your investment if you just wait 10 or 12 or 500 years because it'll be the, that land is going to be in demand, demand, and it is in demand. So, again, with my photographs, uh, generally what I'd like to do is, is, uh, do a little bit of work to them like this uh, so that they look a little more like they did when I was actually there because I'm not a, a, a big techie photo camera guy I, I don't know all the settings I use uh, my aperture priority setting I don't use manual um, and I go with that and I just kind of look and shoot if it come, if it turns out, that's great. If I need to work on it, well, then I need to uh, do this. Uh, my camera is pretty complicated. Actually, I have two of them. I've been taking photographs for I don't know um, forty-five years, and I, I just never got that techie side. Uh, I've taken photography classes and I just kind of sat there like I was in a Russian as a second language class. I just didn't get it. The only thing I understood about it was that photography is an art form, it's a form of expression, and it's arbitrary. There are no rules. You do what you do, just like making a sketch of something or painting a painting because you kind of paint paintings right um, so it's arbitrary like that and, and that's sort of how I, I look at my photographs uh, I don't post any without going through these sort of standard steps and uh, I don't use any presets and, um, presets to me are, are too complicated I'm too old for that right I still like it as old school as I can get, and this is about as old school as I can get. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm going through a, a large set of photos that I took the other day of this place, and uh, and choosing which ones I want to use to post. Ones I want to use to post uh, go through these steps and then I export the photo or a copy of it the this edited version into a different folder and then I close up the uh, original photo image without it having been altered and that's why when I close something you'll see save and, and I click on no don't save because I don't want it to save uh, the edits that I made on the original image so so that's some of that uh, I don't use Photoshop I've tried it but the learning curve is a little steep it was bad enough learning this program uh, which I've used for almost 20 years this is uh, a program by Corel uh, they're a Canadian company and I believe they're based in Ottawa um, they're really on, on this level of graphic program whether it's photo editing or vector drawing um, it, it's really the only equivalent to Photoshop that I know of. Um, but it's Canadian so I use it and I don't have to worry about trying to learn another program that does what I need it to so that little thing that I keep po uh, popping on there a lot of people like to call that a watermark, but it's really not a watermark. I don't view it as a watermark. Uh, it's like to me, it's like uh, like uh, a 
signature. So if I, if I do a sketch, or if I paint something, I'm going to sign it and date it probably, um, so that people know who uh, made that piece of work and that it belongs to somebody. Uh, that little uh, image that I, I pop onto all of my all of my photos serves the same purpose, as well as a deterrent for people who. Uh, like to roam around the internet and hawk other people's photographs and then pass them off as their own wherever it is that they happen to post them on Twitter, TikTok, Waka Walk, whatever, I don't know. So that's a bit of a deterrent because uh, it's transparent and it's, it's uh, difficult to remove it without sort of altering the image. Uh, if it was a watermark that I was planting on these images, I would pop it right in the center and it would be fairly large. That way it disrupts the, the whole photograph. And you'll see that if you go to a stock photography website, they, they uh, watermark their images to the T. I don't like to do that because you know it, it takes away from the image and it takes away from what I'm trying to do, which is just show you some photos that I took and hope that you like them and, and give me lots of money for it, which isn't going to happen. Um, yeah, so I, I'm kind of running out of words because, as I said, YouTube flagged me for a copyright violation of a, uh, a playlist that I had been listening to when I made this. That, that didn't get flagged for copyright violation. It, I, I really don't get it. it re that really bothers me. That someone can go and post a whole bunch of other people's music without them being, or that video being blocked. And then I'm just listening to it like elevator music and uh, it gets blocked. I guess it's hit and miss a hit and miss kind of thing, right? I'm not making any money off this, so, you know, but that's how it goes. All right, so not really much uh, in the way of commentary on this. Um, uh, I will say that I, I, when, I when I open up uh, one of these images uh, to edit them, or edit it, it's actually a very large image, and if I were to print it, if I had a printer that was large enough to print it, it would come out about the size of a poster, maybe a little bit larger. So I downsize all of my photographs to a good size. Um, I like to use, uh, if I'm going a, a landscape image, I like to go about 1,400 pixels wide, uh, and right there, that's a that's a I'm adjusting the, uh, the dimensions there. So I like about 1,400 pixels wide by about 930. And if I'm going portrait like this one, uh, then I like uh, uh, to resize them down to uh, 1,200 pixels tall and about 900 or so pixels wide. It's just that uh, if... if uh, the dimensions of an image that are uploaded to Facebook are a little bit wonky, then Facebook will get its face in there and it will resize the image for you. And that doesn't always look very good because it's just an automated process and they're going to squash or crunch or whatever your image. So I like to head it off at the pass and do it, and plus this feeds my OCD. So I can just follow along whenever it's a pretty boring kind of uh, video, especially without the music. Like, and I don't sing, and well, I don't know, I guess I could start playing guitar, but um, that, that would probably get flagged for I don't know, playing 2112, right? 
or Dazed and Confused, which is about the same length as this video is. So I'm not going to bother with that. So I think I'll just, you know, put some duct tape on and um, let this video run. If you finish it, that's great. If you like it, that's great. And if you don't, that's just fun too. Um, this is the first time I've actually watched the uh, whole thing because I have to watch it as I'm narrating it. And that was, uh, yeah, okay, so I do find things to talk about, Henry. Anyways, there was uh, this silo there. Um, isn't a super old silo. I don't think it's anywhere near as old as the farmhouse is. Um, but it would be a, a, a grain silo. And uh, it's definitely older than the silos that are at the two farms of two of the brothers beside this one. Those silos are those uh, small, short uh, metal ones with a sort of conical top to them and for, for grain. And this one would have served the same purpose because it's not very tall. And if it had a roof or whatever over it, uh, that's long gone. A lot of the tree stumps that you see, a lot of the the junk that's sitting around there. There's some uh, construction equipment and whatnot lying around there doing nothing. It's been there for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. Uh, it's from, uh, it's all from the uh, company that, that owns all of this, uh, which is a construction company. I think I said that already. Yeah, I'll probably repeat myself a whole bunch of times, I know. So, that's uh, kind of a explanation on why you're seeing some, some weird stuff there. Uh, there are no farm implements at all at either of the farms. Uh, there's no brass cutters, there's no manure spreaders, there's nothing. I think I found a shovel in the bush at this place. And there was a um, a hoe at another at one of the other farms uh, that was uh, one of the handheld uh, push ones, but, and it was very old. Uh, that one, the wood handles were, were almost uh, fossilized. But I was surprised when it, when I checked out all three of the properties, and I've been to each of them a few times. It, there really was nothing there. Uh, uh, one might think that, well, maybe somebody uh, carted them off or took them or sold them. It's a possibility, but on all three properties, I don't know that that would happen. Uh, all three properties are owned by different uh, companies. There are no individuals that privately own these places, which is one of the reasons that I don't mind walking around on them and trespassing. Um, if they don't want people trespassing, then I don't know. My mom always told me to clean up my messes when it was finished, right? If you don't clean up your mess, then, well. But anyways, then, uh, uh, the house, uh, the farmhouse here, I've been inside it before. Uh, there it is there. It's missing a section on the back that was demolished, I think, around 1990, somewhere around there. And that rear section would have contained a staircase that led to the second floor, and it would have contained a kitchen and probably laundry and maybe a bathroom. Because on the main floor of this house, there is no kitchen and there is no bathroom. And there is no set of stairs going upstairs, but there's an upstairs. So somebody decided that the place was going to be minus that back section. It might have burned, uh, which you know, that doesn't sound right because there's no charred wood there. Or it might have just collapsed, who knows. It was in somebody's way. And they took it out. And it's too bad because uh, these Gothic Revival farmhouses, uh, they're Gothic Revival farmhouses because of 
their shape, not just because of their Gothic style windows, but because of the actual shape of the house and how it looks from above. Uh, a totally Gothic structure like a church or a house would look like a Christian cross if you were to look down on it from above, which is how people liked it to look uh, if it were, you know, some being looking down on it and, and smiling, uh, like God. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Uh, anyway, so, so the removal of that back section makes it look more like a, a little schoolhouse and, and it, it pretty much erased its uh, main gothic revival feature. The windows are still there, that's great, but the shape is gone. It's just, it's like a um, uh, an Irish uh, salt box house now. Anyways, Ooh, we're almost through. You can see some of the history that, that, that's, that goes with this house, like that, that set of swings or a swing, whatever, um, would have been by the last family that was there, which I don't think was a Marshall family. Uh, they would have been the last ones there that, that ended up selling to, uh, I don't know, what, you know, whatever the company that owns it now is. It was probably those that they sold it to. The other two farmhouses, uh, I believe they are developers that own them. So they're going to reap some massive profit off their investments once they demolish uh, the farmhouses, get them out of the way. And uh, the other ones also have barns on their properties and they're going to go as well. And the, uh, uh, the entire look of the place is going to change and will just become a bunch of new houses or town houses, whatever, something like that. This isn't really, uh, that ground that these uh, farms are loca located at aren't really known as very good agricultural ground to grow things on. Uh, well, at least not a wide variety of things. It's considered wetlands. And there are quite a few areas here that, that dip. And once they start to dip, uh, you get water. This house, uh, they I think that they must have put a whole bunch of uh, earth in a pile and then built the house on this flattened up pile to elevate the house. That must have been a lot of work back then. They didn't have bulldozers. So I did a lot of walking here. I went right out into um, the middle of a cornfield. You can see it there. Um, to get some shots that I don't think anyone has because they didn't go there. A lot of people are afraid of being spotted and seen and and all of a sudden, sirens are wailing, and the military's arriving, and they're being thrown into jail and into the car, and they got handcuffs on, and the cops are beating them up. And that doesn't happen. That's not the real world. Um, so I, I don't mind. If, if the police come along and say, yo, buddy, what are you doing? I show them the camera. I show them photos that I've taken. You know, I apologize for wasting your time and all that, yada, yada. And they say, okay, well, it's our job to ask you to leave. They're nice photos, but we have to ask you to leave. And you have to leave now and, and not come back. If you come back again, we'll give you a citation. Uh, trespassing isn't uh, in the criminal code. Uh, it's a municipal bylaw. So all, all you can get is a citation, which is the same as a parking violation. So people get upset about people who go and do this sort of thing. And yeah, they're the same kind of people who might park in a wheelchair parking spot. 
or they'll park in a spot where they're not supposed to park on the street. Conflicting. Uh, when I explore, I, I, uh, I don't like to, I don't really like getting into inside of a place. And on this particular visit, this is the front door. Uh, you can see that there's a big piece of plywood right in front of the front door. And on this visit, I didn't go inside of the house because that would have involved me using something to move that piece of plywood. And I don't do that. Break and entering, that is in the Canada Criminal Code, and, and uh, explorers have been charged with it in the past. And now, whatever. Um, with break and enter, and that's a pretty serious crime when you, when you go to a place and you force your way in just so that you can get a couple of photographs. I mean, come on, right? Uh, I like the historical part of it and recording it because probably the next time I drive in, up into this area, uh, it's about 20 minutes away, uh, the farmhouse will be gone and completely erased and, and there's no one left to remember it. So this is kind of my way of uh, feeding my, my enthusiasm for historical sites. You know, particularly when they can't be saved. Like this one. Uh, in this photograph, that's the front of the house and that's the front bay window. You'll notice that there's uh, actually the cursor is right on it. You'll notice, notice that there's some pretty heavy duty caging on the windows. I don't know what's up with that. Um, like that's some pretty serious metal that, that's covering the windows. Uh, you, uh, you'd think that they got something have some. There's something inside that, that is really valuable that they don't want anyone to break into. Uh, who knows? It could also be that they don't want something to get out. Uh, when I was inside the house on an earlier visit last year, that front door was wide open, it was missing the plywood, and I stepped in for a quick walk around, and whoever used to live inside of this house, um, they were growing, or I don't know, growing, breeding probably, breeding some, some little animals, probably chinchillas or rabbits or something like that, because there's a bunch of cages in there. And there's hay on the floor, and there's, uh, you know, those hamster water bottles, but they're kind of bigger. Um, so maybe the, the, the cages were to stop these things from breaking out of the house. I don't know. Do, do they break out of houses? Maybe. Well, I don't know. Uh, Monty Python, they did a, a skit on those killer rabbits, so maybe they were doing little rabbits, and they didn't want them getting out and killing all the... Uh, guys riding around saying, wee, on their horses, I don't know. Um, Century Manor, which was part of Hamilton's old insane asylum, it doesn't even have metal cages on its glass that are that good. Actually, uh, Century Manor, I think they've all been torn off. Uh, or wrecked in some way, but they were not to keep the inmates in there. They were to keep people out. Or, well, maybe they were. I don't know. Uh, Century Manor, the, the, the building that is still there that remains, it's the only part of it that remains, uh, was, was used for housing the criminally insane. The actual asylum itself, which was far larger than Century Manor, uh, was used for the general population, um, people that were more manageable. At East House, they were a little more, uh, they were more serious cases in there. So maybe they did need the cages for that, uh, who knows. So I'm still running through the, uh, the steps of editing. As I, I go through these, I'm probably nearing the end. I think I have about 18, no, not 18, yeah, about 18 photos so far. 
And again, I do this for every single image that I uh, upload. I like I like them to look their best. It's not for everybody. Not everybody has to do it. Now, I've seen some really awesome photos uh, get uh, be posted, and I know that uh, they weren't edited in any way. So that's pretty much the end of it. I'm running out of time because the video is almost over. And this scene here, uh, this image is the backyard. This is the view they would have had from the back of the house. And yes, that's my 20th image. So that's the end. Thanks for watching if you made it all through. Awesome. Bye.